Hi, Aaron Guthrie. I'm Tom Gallo on the Science Transmission. Okay, excellent. He's the Management Council over at USA. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Sure. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
a white male dominated institution. And so, um, and as you move up in the ranks of the State Department, it gets more and more white and male. And sometimes I wind up, you know, at my rank now, I look around the room and I think, girl, you are the only spot in here. <laughs> so I can hear my grandfather still in the back of my head. Um, and so, of course, obviously, that's one of the reasons why I'm interested in diversity issues, interested in recruitment issues, and very, very happy to support my colleague, Eric, in, in his efforts. So Eric is, unlike me, boring Massachusetts. Eric is a native New Yorker. He's one of you. He can talk your language. Um, and he, uh, so he's a native New Yorker. He went to Columbia Law School. And he works for the State Department in Washington, DC. But he also has a consulting company. And he, of course, has written this wonderful book. And uh, with that, I'm just going to turn it over. So, thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming today. I appreciate your attendance and your support. Uh, I'm Eric Guthrie. I am the author of the book, Diversify Buy or Die. And I'm also the president and CEO of Better Me, Better We, where powerful communications advance the diversity community. And the two work hand in hand because with my Better Me, Better We company, I encourage companies to have diversity be part of their mission statement, part of their objectives, part of their overall attempt to improve their bottom line, whether they're a corporation, a 501c3, a small business, a for-profit. Diversity impacts the bottom line for all those organizations, including government agencies, okay? So when I go out and consult on that, I make sure to realize that they use diversity in the way that it should be used. So in doing so, taking this show on the road, I've been, I'm gonna give you a little confession here right now. And yes, I did practice this because I've heard the discussion before. This is the first time I'm doing this presentation. Because I was asked to, I was, all right? No, that's okay. I admitted that I did practice, not that I didn't practice. Oh, oh I see. <laughs> Sorry. I'm taking this on the road. I've been asked to give this presentation to some national organizations like SHRM and some other ones at their big national conferences, and one in Toronto as well on diversity. So I'm like, oh man, I better practice this thing before I give it in front of like, you know, hundreds or, you know, 500 or so people. Um, and the submission process is now for the fall. So I, I put this together and I practiced it. <laughs> so you guys are gonna be experiencing with me the very first time I'm doing this in public, so I hope you enjoy it. You'll do fantastic. Don't okay. worry. We'll be reading for you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, thanks. Um, so I'm a trainer. I run a training department, and I'm a trainer. And you know, whenever I do a training, I want to make sure I tell the audience, this is what I'm going to tell you. Then I tell you, and I ask you, did I tell you what I told you I was going to tell you? <laughs> right? Because that's the only way to make sure you get the message across. And here are the objectives for our time to go today. Recognize the importance of a consistent definition of diversity and inclusion. And I'm going to tell you why in the story and some more uh, little vignettes why that's so important. I'm going to introduce the diversity equation. I'm going to tell you how important it is to link diversity to the mission statement and the objectives of the organization. And I'm going to review some resources that would be helpful in using the diversity equation and definition of diversity. The resources are there. We just have to be able to use them. And a lot of times, companies don't even really use them. And when I go talk to them, they're like, huh, I never thought about doing that. So I'll tell you a few stories about that as well. This is a highly interactive discussion. You know, we're, we're all here. So please, if you have a question, you have a comment, let's engage. That's how we learn as adult learners. We learn by engaging and by doing. You know, I don't want to be lecturing you the entire time. So please, as soon as I'm done with my thought, you know, you can have the floor and we can engage from there. Or engage each other. We're all here to learn from each other. That's the beauty of diversity. If you, if you don't go into something to learn, if you think your point of view is the only point of view, then you have limited your life. And I can tell you a story about that too. <laughs> so, why is this so important? Why is diversity and inclusion so important? Well, I kind of break it out in short-term goals and long-term goals. Okay, in the short-term goals, you need to have some type of focus. If your diversity effort is just put together without an actual focus on what it's supposed to do, short term and long term, then how are you gonna succeed? What's your measure for success? What's your benchmark? What are your metrics? And one of the statements that I always say is you cannot manage diversity if you cannot measure diversity, okay? 
at any diversity apartment or any diversity organization that is just doing things just to do things and say, this is diversity, go do it. Well, what, where's your success rate? How do, you, how do you tell if you did it? And if you can't do that, then you're not really managing diversity well, okay? Uh, clarify the use. Now that's important as well because what are you using it for? Using it for recruiting, retention, business goals, business development, using it to get new clients, and using it to diversify your technology. All those are options you should consider depending on the company and the industry that you're in. And if you use those with a fine focus on what it's supposed to do and then build the measurements in, you've got some good short-term goals. Key stakeholder buy-in. Sometimes when you're talking about diversity, people have all these different points of view about diversity and they say, you know what, it's not working. Well, it's easy to say that based on metrics because you can't prove it worked without the metrics, right? But if you have metrics, then you can say it is working and here's why. We got this percentage of success rate, this percentage of hires, we saved this much money, this many new clients, this much more for marketing campaigns, all linked to diversity. So that it, everything ties together, okay? Can you think of any other reasons why diversity or how it could be helpful in a short-term goal? Not to put you on a spot like that, but I missed it. Any thoughts? All right, well, if you think of anything, let me know. Long-term. So when you design a diversity department and when you design diversity efforts, you shouldn't be just thinking, what well, is this going to happen a year from now? You should be thinking, how is this going to help the company 20 years from now? Okay? Because when you want to build a forest, you plant seeds that will sprout up 20 years from now. Okay? If you're looking for a tree and you plant a seed a year from now, you're in the wrong profession. Okay? You're not thinking long term. And a lot of times, diversity efforts and diversity departments aren't doing long term planning and strategic planning. The company is doing it. If they're smart, otherwise they're going to go extinct. But if they're not doing it for diversity, they're not tying it to the company. So the diversity efforts stop here, the company is thinking way out here, and you've got this huge gap that you have to fill. Okay? That is why you have to look at it short term and long term. Also, I think that we should do some more industry standards for diversity. No one's doing it yet, but if we have industry like, for example, education, and we want to figure out ways to diversify student bodies, administrations, and professors, then if there's a definition of diversity that has more of a lean towards education, that means that Baruch can do it and the other colleges can follow suit, and when you have more consistency, guess what? You have key stakeholder buy-in, you have a clearer communication, and you have a better way to make an a effort to get to the communities, to get to the students, to the, the professors, the researchers, the technology that you need to be successful. Any other things for long term that anyone wants to bring up or back to short term real quick? Okay, hold that thought. So here's, I, mean, I love telling stories. To me, telling stories is a really great way to communicate and get a point of course. And here's my diversity equation story. Uh, I was in, uh, was in Ohio a couple of years ago. And I was with a number of diversity professionals and they were getting their uh, certified diversity executive uh, certification. And there was a client of mine, the company was a client of mine. And I said, you know what, I want to audit your class to see what you're doing. Because before I put my name on your company as a client, I'm also interviewing you to see what type of training you do. It was okay. Um, enough for me to say, you know, we can keep working together. So I'm in this room with about eight people. And it's a three-day class, and we were all having discussions about different aspects of diversity, from law to uh, LGBTQ to global diversity to boardroom diversity. It's a whole series of, uh, of topics and conversations. And we get to a point of discussion where I say, you know what, and I've never asked this question before. I say, how do you guys define diversity? There's about seven, eight of you, nine of you in here. It was about the same number of people. It's like eight or nine people. Every person, mind you, some of these were actually diversity practitioners and practicing it for a while, every person gave a different definition. Every person. So I was like, huh, that's interesting. Well, let me see if I can get everybody on the same page. Now, one person was willing to give up their idea of what diversity should be. And I was like, huh, that was interesting. 
So after about a 45 minute, me trying to mediate this thing, you know, off the cuff and, you know, see if I can get this one person to agree with somebody else, I said, you know what, you know, this is not gonna happen. But when I went back and I thought about it for a long time, how can diversity evolve? How can it progress if everyone's thinking about it in a different way, right? That's like being in an orchestra and you're playing C, you're playing a D flat, you're playing an E, you know, you're playing a, a, a major or minor. What's it gonna sound like? Blah. It's gonna sound terrible, right? Because no one is thinking about it from a consistent point of view and if you can't have a consistent defini definition of diversity, then guess what you're gonna have? You're gonna have chaos. People disagreeing left and right, up and down. And without that consistency, it's not going to evolve. And that, so then I asked them to prove a point. I said, define HR for me. Same definition across the board. Define legal. Same definition across the board. Define IT. Same definition across the board. So when you go to other major departments in a company, they could define them all lockstep. When it came to diversity, not one shared definition. And that's when I said, Someone's going to have to figure out how to do this. Might as well be me. Okay? So, in order to do this, I had to do a lot of research. And I mean a lot of research. And I looked at over hundreds of definitions of diversity, from Webster's definition to Fortune 500 CEOs to major, major uh, 501c3s. And they're all over the place. 